everyone. Uh, this is a recording on how to create the best bridge of body using optical markers in Motive. Uh, Motive is the proprietary software of um, OptiTrack, which is a manufacturer for optical cameras um, and optical markers. Um, currently, we're using the version 2.2 of Motive. We are using a dual camera, um, which we can see if I zoom out here in the viewport. Um, two little camera set up here, um, and we're using a standard rigid body constellation. Um, what is a rigid body at the, to begin with? Uh, uh, a rigid body is defined by three markers, um, and once these markers are selected and created in the software, uh, they're given uh, a, a pivot point, a fourth marker per se, and that pivot point defines their um, global rotation uh, within the software. So as I said, we need a minimum of three markers to create um, a rich body, but we can add as many markers uh, as we like to it. Usually we like to um, kind of maintain a maximum number of 10, so around three to 10, depending on what you want to track. Large objects obviously might create, uh, might require a large amount of, of markers. Um, if you're tracking multiple objects, then you want to have minimal markers, but obviously um, allowing them to uh, be asymmetrical. So um, how the software defines its pivot point location is defined by the location of the markers. So if I select one of the markers, obviously in 3D, they are um, given uh, a 3D position. So um, their center point um, in the center defines where they are rotated and then where they are moving. So uh, we can add four or five, and obviously that center point will adjust depending um, on their different locations. So Right now, this little uh, piece that I have in my hand is quite useful because, um, first of all, it's 3D printed, but we can also move these certain markers and attach them into um, separate holes, or we can also add more markers to this rigid body. Um, and I think this can create about 100 different constellations. So what a constellation is, basically, this is one rigid body constellation, and now if I take that one back out, for instance, and I move it to another position, you know, even a few millimeters apart, that is considered um, a second constellation, and so on and so on. So I'm just going to keep it like that uh, and place it flat onto my desk facing the camera. And I'm just going to highlight the four markers. And we can use Control T for a shortcut, um, or we can use the Create section here. We can give it a name as well, or we just leave it rich body. Um, so we have created a rigid body, and instantly it's selected, and we're given graph information of its um, X, Y, and Z positional um, information. So if I then go to the Edit tab here, we have different parameters, and we can also have different properties. Uh, I have advanced properties enabled, so we can just go deep, deep dive into the, the where the magic settings are, where the magic happens. Um, so obviously we can see it's a bit jittery. Uh, to begin with, um, obviously if it's flat on the table and the calibration is not great, which is looking at my environment, not the idealist of optical places, um, given the current situation, so we're all at home, we're given working with what we have. So if I pick up this constellation, we can see the graph move and we can see the rigid body move um, in real time in the space, in the software. So we can see here on the right hand corner, we have four markers. And we can also scroll down here on the right-hand side properties, and we can see um, their locations of which they were created for their um, uh, during calibration, during their initiation. So uh, we can scroll up and place it with some of these settings. Um, now, generally, these settings can differ depending on what you are defining as a rich body. Now, we are using optical markers. Active markers defined have different settings. Um, and again, if you're using it in a, uh, in a less lighting control environment, you want to apply some more settings. If you have a control environment, you want to play with um, some of these less settings, leave them more to default. Um, so we're just going to have a look at some, what some of these do. So obviously, we're given a streaming ID, which is what defines uh, what this rigid body is. Um, and we're also, what is the label? Label, my favorite label. So we can have here our label, which is what's our name here, rigid body. Um, active ID, we're not using any active, so we can skip these steps. 
uh, min mark count three, so we need many more three markers to create rich body. We can change this, but that's not suggested. Um, and smoothing. So again, if you're using VR headsets, we we do not recommend applying any smoothing because that have an impact on the performance of the headsets. Um, we do necessarily require a bit of smoothing in this scenario because if I place it down onto my ground plane, basically my zero zero zero, we can see this graph start to spike in a second. Now they're pretty zoomed in, so we don't see. But now they're going to start adjusting. There we go. So we can start playing with some of these smoothing parameters. Uh, 50 is like a little bit high. Um, usually I like to play a value of 20 just to keep it nice and steady. I, again, this can be, if recorded, you could be smooth in post. But if streamed real time, then you do want to apply some of these settings. Um, so as it's moving, uh, we want to keep it around that value. Forward prediction, uh, um, I, I don't necessarily use a lot of it because. Um, it kind of creates a bit of a, a jump to, to the rigid body and creates gap sizes. Um, again, if your environment is not ideal for optical tracking, um, then you might want to adjust the forward prediction a little bit to uh, allow the software to calculate where the, where the rigid body is, is going if it's in quite um, linear flow. Um, a tracking algorithm is defined by what uh, tracking we're using. So right now we are passive. So uh, we kind of leave it at auto select. If we're doing passive, we do ray based, and active, we do marker based. Um, occlusion model, we leave it at the default, and enhanced performance. Um, obviously, if we have one rich body, we don't necessarily need to enhance the performance of it. If we have multiple rich bodies into the scene, I introduce another one, and I introduce another one, and so on and so forth. We go up to however, a hundred so many. Um, you want to um, keep this on just to kind of maintain their, their rigid body accuracy. Um, sharing markers, um, it's basically allowing rigid bodies to share a single marker. So sometimes you might have a car constellation that you want to transform and pull apart where um, one of the markers stays in the same position at all times for both and you want to maintain its position and keep that as um, a pivot point, for example, which we can see later on. Then uh, there are there are particular settings which allow you to do that. Um, not recommended most of the times, but um, there are use cases where you might find that useful. Um, uniqueness, obviously, we want to um, allow a certain uniqueness for each rigid body, so we will keep that as default and on. Um, and essentially, jump prevention is kind of stops large spikes from 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 happening ever so often during the tracking, not when it's stable. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then we'll go back down to the display settings so you can play around with the color of the rich body, labeling, orientation, position history to track where it's moving in the space. We can create nice little circular shapes. Um, let's just move these rich bodies out of the space. So these are the extra rich bodies you can see in the scene, just markers appearing. So we'll move those to the side. Um, um, track rays, etc. So these are just general default stuff that you can play with model replacement. Um, if you want to replace the rigid body with an actual 3D model in the, in the environment, in the 3D scene here, you can't do so. Um, and starting constraints. So this is kind of useful if you know that the rigid body is only moving in a certain axis, so it's not moving up and down. You can allow that value to be, um, uh, let's say, at its max, so it never is, um, it basically doesn't um, reinforce that. So if I enforce uh, 1000 on the Y, uh, Tracking. Um, it would only go until that value on the Y, which I don't think I can reach to, given my tracking. Yeah. Um, so you can see that a bit better. Uh, perfect. So now let's say we have um, a tennis racket and we have markers on the um, on the outside of the racket, but we can't get markers on the grip because that's where the uh, the talent has his hand. So what we essentially do in that scenario? is we know where the pivot point of it, which is where the grip is, we know where the mark constellation is, um, and we can adjust the p pivot position of that uh, marker. Um, what we typically could do in the studio, which is quite useful, is we put a marker on the position of which we know where the pivot is. So let's say uh, we put that marker there, uh, we assign it, so highlight it, Rich body and add selected markers to rich body. So now 
this marker is added to the pivot point although it's not a good idea because it's not this one is slightly moving so it's moving off it uh, let me just reset that because when you're holding it actually basically I can just show it with the one so if I just keep this and create that and select one of these markers I can set the pivot point to that marker so now my rigid body pivot point moves in respect to that marker but this is not wise to do because if that marker is lost at any given time which is this one sorry uh, that one then our rigid body keeps on losing its tracking all the time so you just want to be aware of um, which one of those you set but we can also reset back to jump to our original location and reset our pivot um, so that kind of enhances um, kind of, sorry, kind of give you a bit of an overview of, of um, kind of tips you can do with the rigid body constellation itself um, as I said you can apply certain offsets so um, if we apply 10 millimeters on the Y and keep applying that we can see now, now that that is the center of our rigid body we can also apply uh, a rotation on the Y let's say and on the Z um, and hit apply Ooh, actually 1800 not good and hit apply to that and watch the rigid body constellation just shift so now it's moving in that direction uh, we can always jump reset the rotation reset the uh, position so now we're back to default so our original um, set which is what was defined here with the markers um, generally as I said smoothing if you want to apply more of it um, if you know that you're going to be streaming this information um, whether it's real time uh, we advise applying a little bit of smoothing whether it's post um, kind of semi real time streaming um, which is essentially the same thing you can record it smooth it out and then restream it out afterwards um, generally this is the best practices for um, creating a uh, rigid body again optimal environment um, keeping your markers spaced out uh, like all these rigid bodies have um, again this rigid body is a bit harder to track if you have a system like I do right now so if you can see here I'm only getting four markers where uh, the fifth one is slightly blinking um, because we have uh, I think 6.9 markers and 12 mil markers which are slightly different in size so we cannot see um, the 6 mil markers that well as the, the 12 mil markers I have to really bring it close to um, the camera for them to be seen and they're just even so not being seen very well so um, if I create the rigid body even with that flickery marker uh, let's just say I go back to the other one I had here so even if I take one marker off we can see that the rigid body still maintains its position although three markers are not advised because once you lose one you lost the rigid body constellation so once I unhide it I get it back so now that marker is still there what we can do is select it and remove it from the rigid body even if we put it into a different location source it, select it at selected marker so now we are back to our four rigid body constellation. So this is a quick guide on how to get optical, um, optimal rigid body constellations. Um, thank you.